all ambassadors, diplomats, excellencies, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning everyone. Thank you all for honoring our invitation. I'm truly honored to be co-hosting this special event with my friend, His Excellency, Ambassador Lang Iabul, Permanent Mission of the Gambia Mission to the United Nations. I'm deeply grateful to have organized this event with our collective members, including Dr. Yeng Leong of our collective future group, Mr. Wang of GUC Incorporation, Sean of the Wall Street um, News Agency, and many of other partners that are here. The obvious question is, what is the purpose of this summit? The very reason that we are all gathered here. You see, poverty and seeking solutions for eradicated poverty and climate change are important issues and topics. Poverty, as we all have seen, is a never-ending vicious cycle of human exploitation, corruption, and abuses. Ultimately, to break this cycle, the greed of humans must be taken out of the solutions, or at least supervised by morally or obligated system. So recently, the United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, made a statement that the United Nations must embrace blockchain technologies. And so today, at this summit, we want to learn how we can actually use blockchain technology, artificial intelligence, to help in the eradication of poverty and other sustainable goals. The sustainable goals, um, 17 sustainable goals, today we're going to be focusing on two main um, sustainable development goals. The sustainable development goal number one, which is no poverty, and sustainable development goal number 13, which is climate action. These are of utmost importance because without attaining these um, goals, we may really not be able to truly attain the sustainable goals that we are all working hard to achieve. So we're here by today, I um, want to learn from others who are using artificial intelligence and blockchain technologies to make progress um, towards the eradication of um, poverty and climate change. Like many of you here today, I am not a blockchain expert, but I am an advocate um, seeking for um, the eradication of poverty, seeking for solutions to eradicating poverty, climate change, and all the other sustainable goals. So we, um, we will have um, a welcome remarks from our our uh, main host, our chair for this occasion, His Excellency Ambassador, Ambassador Le, um, Lang Yabu, to officially make his remarks to open and declare the summit, um, to give a welcoming rem uh, remarks and declare the um, summit open. You will also have an opportunity to hear from our collective members and our organizing teams and experts as they share their insightful solutions um, on this uh, topic. We'll have three main subjects, technology, commercial, and then human, humanity. Covering the technology space on the subject of artificial intelligence and blockchain will be Nicholas and Andrew. We'll also have Sean and Daryl, who will share um, their work and what they are doing, you know, using blockchain and artificial intelligence. So after the welcome address um, by His Excellency, Ambassador, 
we will um, be hearing from our beautiful moderator who will, uh, and, uh, Angie? Angie, the beautiful, beautiful moderator who will be um, moderating the panel discussion. So at this time, without much ado, I will give the um, time for the ambassador to give us his uh, welcome remarks and declare the summit open. Thank you all for coming once again. Let's sit back and let's learn together and rub our minds together, like we say in Africa, on ways um, um, we can actually eradicate poverty and climate change. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I would start by acknowledging the presence of the following people. My friend, Dr. Queen Blessing, it was founder Global Empowerment Movement USA, representatives of Wall Street News Agency, our collective, GUC Incorporate, my colleagues from the Permanent Mission of the Gambia, diplomats, invited delegates. I am honored to be the host of this important event geared towards looking at ways of combating poverty and climate change with the use of artificial intelligence blockchain. On behalf of my colleagues at the Permanent Mission of the Gambia in New York, I seize this opportunity to extend special thanks and appreciation to Dr. Queen Blessing Itua and her team, all other partners and attendees for enabling the realization of today's event. It could be recalled that the SDGs were adopted by the international community to create a sustainable future for humankind by ensuring economic growth, social inclusion, and environmental protection. For those of us from the developing South, the attainment of the 17 SDGs, especially SDG 1 and SDG 13, the theme for today's event, is a matter of urgency. This is because the menace of poverty and climate change continues to be among the greatest threats to our peace and security, social cohesion, and development. Therefore, addressing these challenges is not a choice, but a must, because without that, the hope of attending the other SDGs will remain a mere dream for the world. Therefore, I believe I can speak for all of you when I say that SDG 1, No Poverty, is a crisis that all want to join hands and combat as soon as possible. It is a crisis that has a domino effect of factors that include human exploitation, corruption, and abuse. This is where artificial intelligence blockchains comes in by using different technological mechanisms to process economic development and provide equal sustainable supervision for all. Consequently, the time has come for humanity to continue engaging in critical thinking to ensure the use of all innovative ways to free the world of poverty and the dangers of climate change. I certainly cannot, it certainly cannot be business as usual. This is because the last decade, this, this is because this is the last decade for the world to attain the SDGs. The organization of this gathering is in that spirit, and it is expected that the interventions of the knowledgeable panel of experts will help us a lot in providing better understanding as to how mankind can effectively utilize artificial intelligence blockchain to combat two of the greatest threats to mankind, i.e. poverty and climate change. As we enter the crucial decade of action for the attainment of the SDGs, we must find different new sustainable and innovative ways of confronting poverty and climate change. This is the opportunity offered by the use of AI blockchain technologies and hence the importance of today's event. The use of AI blockchain technologies can provide humanity with the capacity needed to collect, analyze, and store relevant scientific data relating to poverty and climate change. Its fundamental technological building blocks can be utilized in any application that processes and stores data, which in today's modern age means it can be a valuable tool in almost everything, including healthcare management, transportation logistics, financial platforms, just to name a few. 
The AI blockchain, in addition to the above, can also avail mankind with the needed tool for sustainable supervision and measuring of development indicators to promote and facilitate accountability for both the citizens and the policy makers. It is a known fact that recent advances, advancements in robotics and supercomputers have provided the platform from which AI cognitive machines are beginning to emerge from the domain of science fiction into scientific reality. Since the development of blockchain in 2008, it has become a very important vi virtual ladder tool for information management. Although we are still in the early stages of potentially implementing these technologies into achieving the SDGs, it is encouraging to see there are already plenty of innovators working to use the technology to address the current challenges facing humanity and the collaborative efforts will hopefully serve to help us with the needed solutions. However, it is also important to point out that in our collective drive for innovation, mankind must always adhere to all ethical precautions to avoid potential backlash of people to its innovations. Staying human in the age of innovation and finding the right balance in our actions becomes crucial. There is also the issue of ensuring fair and equitable sharing of the benefits of new innovations globally. In conclusion, I remain convinced that with occasions like today, humankind will certainly continue the endeavor to remain on the course for the eradication of poverty and the challenges of climate change for the benefit of humanity. With these remarks, I have the singular honor to declare this important event open. I thank you all for your kind attention. The moderator, the floor is all yours. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Queen Blessing. Thank you, Ambassador. I'm very honored to be here. I'm Angie from Wall Street News Agency. Now it's my honor to introduce the panel representation members. Nicholas Hardy. Nicholas Hardy, after spending several years in financial and overseas real estate investment, he had the good fortune of meeting Mr. Wang Lingjian, founder of GUC. Together, they realized that they share a vision of the world where blockchain technology will create an even economic playing field. For his work with Chinese immigrant communities here in New York, he has been awarded a citation of honor from the Queen Borough President. Let's welcome Nicholas Hardy. Good morning. It is an honor to be here today representing GUC at the behest of the Honorable Lang Yaobo and Dr. Queen Blessing Itua. Our topic for discussion, of course, is how blockchain technology can alleviate world poverty and address climate change. Poverty and climate change are perhaps the most pressing issues of our times. And I am both honored and humbled to have this opportunity to address these issues with you today. Unfortunately, I'm not sure that I, or anyone for that matter, has all the answers we are looking for. Being keenly aware of my own inadequacy to address such great and noble topics as how to alleviate poverty and climate change, I want to keep our heads out of the clouds, to keep our feet grounded, so to speak. As such, I want to start today's round of discussions by focusing on what blockchain actually is. Certainly, there are many who understand it better than I do. That being said, perhaps my layman's expression of it all will be easier for most of you to follow than an explanation steeped in technical jargon. So, while we are all here today to discuss how blockchain can help alleviate poverty and climate change, the one hope I really have from my short speech is that if you take away just one thing, then it will be a firm understanding of what blockchain is and what it is not. With all the information that is out there at our fingertips nowadays, one would think that understanding blockchain should be easy. 
But you see, I think part of the confusion over blockchain arises out of the fact that blockchain is in the midst of something of an identity crisis. Certainly, more attention has been given to it over the past couple of years, but blockchain inevitably gets conflated with cryptocurrency, especially Bitcoin. Just last week, I read an article on the World Economic Forum in which a writer began by correctly differentiating between blockchain, cryptocurrency, digital currency, but then proceeded to say that for the sake of brevity, those three concepts would be used interchangeably for the rest of the article. It is slights of hand like this, both innocent and purposeful, that have brought us to a veritable fork in the road. Will blockchain technology be used for good? to support the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals? Or will it become just another tool to create wealth for the sake of creating wealth? On the one hand, advocates of blockchain and cryptocurrency tout its potential to bring banking and financial services to 1.7 billion people around the world who are either underbanked or, or completely unbanked. But on the other hand, Blockchain simply is not as open and democratic as many of its advocates would have you believe. While the code for Bitcoin, for example, may be open source, the actual exchanges and mechanisms for its practical use are not. And the same is arguably true for all forms of blockchain. Some 30 years ago, when Tim Berners-Lee invented the World Wide Web, his hope was that technology would foster collaboration and participation in the synthesis and dissemination of information worldwide. But within 10 years of its advent, Berners-Lee already saw reason to, reason to lament how his vision had been co-opted. And the World Wide Web became instead just another publishing medium that focused on pushing information to consumers rather than empowering collaborators. Perhaps the same could be said for blockchain technology today. How collaborative and accessible is it really? There's no shortage of speculation as to how blockchain technology can be used for things like supply chain management, insurance contracts, wills and inheritances, tracking the provenance of food, protecting the integrity of elections, real estate, intellectual property, and so much more but I do not see how any of these applications are really addressing the big issues like poverty and climate change that are facing us today. To me, they sound more like corporate objectives. Make no mistake, we are at a crossroads and there is a very real danger that people will fall into a slumber believing what many of the proselytizers of blockchain technology say, that it is a panacea that it will eliminate corruption and remove the human element of error from our transactions. But I'm not so convinced. I'm wary of a technology that purports to make up for or render inconsequential the shortcomings of mankind. It is just too easy of an out. It removes too much individual accountability, which is ironic because one of the apparent objectives of blockchain is to decentralize authority. But if authority is decentralized, it doesn't just disappear. Somebody has to pick up the slack. If we are to address poverty and climate change, I think we have to recognize that we are in an ongoing fight, that the fight against them is not a one and done, or that they will be eradicated by 2030 and never show their faces again. We are all responsible, and we must all commit to achieving the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, by making conscientious choices about the technologies we use. That being said, technology alone cannot eliminate poverty. It can, however, facilitate the free flow and exchange of ideas, information, and capital from, say, a farmer in Wisconsin or China with an entrepreneur in Gambia. That is the sort of collaboration that Berners-Lee had envisioned for the World Wide Web and that is the sort of commerce that blockchain technology can help facilitate. So long as we're talking about more than just cryptocurrencies. 
Remember, we're not here today to talk about Bitcoin. We're here to talk about blockchain, which in the simplest terms I can put it, is simply a growing list of records, which we call blocks, linked together using cryptography into an unbroken chain, hence the name blockchain. Another way of looking at it is that blockchain is a decentralized distributed ledger that records transactions across a network so that records cannot be altered retroactively without altering all of the subsequent records. The advantage of this whole setup is that by design, blockchain is resistant to modification of its data. I emphasize the word resistant because blockchain technology, like all technology, is not perfect. But I think that part of the message often gets lost amid all the enthusiasm. While everyone is busy singing its praises and thinking of new applications for it, deep down, blockchain is basically just a means to facilitate transactions between people who do not know each other or trust each other. But is that really such a good thing? Call me old-fashioned, but I have little faith in a world without trust. The true value of blockchain will lie in creating an environment conducive to the free flow and exchange of ideas and capital, not by creating silos where we isolate ourselves and sit complacent behind walls of code. Instead, if we build technologies that foster trust and collaboration across borders, then wealth will follow shortly behind. And once people have attained a level of wealth where they can be free to pursue other endeavors beyond just meeting the minimum requirements of providing for their physical needs, then we can all become stewards of this planet and address the other issues of our times, like climate change. This, at least, is part of the naive vision of GUC, and it is a vision I hope to share with all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Niklas. And next one is Andrew Zinn, the technologist. Andrew Zinn, he was an association network administrator in New York State Supreme Court, a MIS associate director in nonprofit organization, an active investor and strategic advisor in blockchain, crypto and crypto mining, an active green energy consultant and a real estate investor, developed and rental management. Let's welcome Andrew Zinn. Thank you, moderator. And good morning, everybody. And thanks to uh, Ambassador, and thanks to the diplomat and delegates, and Dr. Queen, Dr. Yin from Collaborate, and also the speakers uh, on the uh, uh, podium. So it's cold weather. Thanks, everybody, is still coming to attend the event. Hopefully, you still await. <laughs> All right. So, what is a YesCoin? YesCoin. I'm honored. I'm honored to represent YesCoin as a company. So, what is YesCoin? As you see in the in the slideshow, YesCoin is using AI and blockchain technology to promote digital rights and to your digital identity and promote global collaboration with social consent and make the digital world safer uh, for everyone. So. Uh, as we hear the gentleman already mentioned, nobody uh, can be perfectly provide a solution uh, in AI or blockchain to solve the whole world. If we talk about AI and blockchain alone, it will be, if not days, months, or years. So I, I'm not going to spend that much time over here to explain. So I'm going to have, later on we'll have a slideshow to uh, uh, simplify five, five technologies YesCoin is going to provide and work with the organizations uh, like co uh, Collective and then we're going to provide solutions to you and to fight for the two uh, SDG agendas today as the topic. Right. So uh, next night. So YesCoin over the speed. So who I am? I, my name is Andrew Say. I'm the senior advisor uh, from YesCoin. And uh, as I 
the moderator already mentioned. So I have a 20, more than 20 years uh, IT and management experience in Wall Street and also in a unified court system or New York State uh, Supreme Court and also a nonprofit organization and electric power corporation. Uh, I used to work for a network uh, infrastructure operation manager in the largest uh, clearing house and settlement house in Wall Street. Uh, I also was an associate network administrator in the New York Supreme Court. And I also I work as a MIS associate director in a nonprofit organization. Uh, the organizations are helping the people who uh, are suffering economic uncertainty and also suffering domestic violence problems and also uh, Ill Ill illness and also have a problem uh, in regarding to the food. So, and also I'm an active uh, green energy consultant and a real estate investor, developer, and also manage rental uh, properties. All right. So now, before we go deeper to the agenda, let me ask a question for everybody. So what is the definition of a property in terms of uh, how much dollar a person is making per day? Hopefully, anybody can answer this question. It's like Jeopardy. Boom, 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 boom. Anybody? Anybody? Yes. That's a one of a good answer. Who else? Well, I googled this before I came, so it's one ninety, I believe, right? That's another good answer. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm day, so surprised, the young gentleman. Thank you for you and uh, we, uh, understand this question. Thank you. This is why we want to involve the youth, women, and uh, kids. Yes. Global. That's another perfect answer. Thank you. All right. So what's the UN definition? Because uh, again, this is a UN represent the whole world. So let me, let me speak for the, the UN definition. Uh, there are 17 of them. So today we're talking about two of them. First one is the SDG or Sustainable uh, Development Goal. Number one, no properties. There are 736 million to 1.3 billion people live in some forms of poverty, making less than a dollar and 25 cents a day. That will be in the, in the range, and then all three of answers. All right, thank you. That's a good, good answer. So, by 2030, reduce the number of poverty by half and implement social protection system promote equal rights to basic service, including financial service, allocate enough resource for development, creating policy and framework to facilitate uh, collaboration at nation and regional level. So this is the UN, one of the UN goals. This is the one of the topic and genders, and we're going to work with other organizations to provide solution to fight for it. So another agenda and the UN SDG 13 is the climate action. So burning large amount of fossil fuels are after weather patterns that are direct and indirectly impact our food production and also lead sea level rising one to four feet by 2100. By 2030, strengthen capacity to respond to nature disaster integrated uh, planning and national policies promote awareness committed to a hundred billion dollar annual green funding. Again, a hundred billion dollar annual green funding and increased capacity on women, youth, the, the gentleman, I, I was uh, surprised, uh, so youth, and local community. So this is the one of the SDGs and, uh, uh, from UN. So as you see, UN has a very, very a goal, a big goal. By I was told by 2021, this 100 billion dollar annual green funding will be available. But I, I don't, don't, don't get my word on it. I just I, I heard this, uh, this uh, target from UN. All right. So we talk about SDG. We talk about uh, 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 the AI and blockchain. So how YesCoin is going to help and provide and work with other associates uh, to uh, provide uh, 
uh, solution to fight for these uh, two agendas. So let me introduce uh, five uh, technologies YesCoin is embraced right now. So first one, uh, we're using hybrid mode. So as we heard the gentleman uh, earlier mention, uh, blockchain uh, has uh, one of the major characters, decentralized. As we were aware, majority of the financial system or government or a lot of systems are using centralized systems. So what's the difference between centralized and decentralized system? So centralized is, by simple words, controlled by a single entity. Decentralized is no single one entity uh, controlling the entity. So by using this technology, we're going to provide a security and a performance in terms of a speed to bridge to new world adoption, wealth, and distribution. So that meaning that everybody who will participate in, this in, the, in the investment in terms of financials. So second technology, as you see on the slide, is biometric ID. It's a digital identity right. It can access to the financial service, reduce the fraud. As everybody is using, I believe right now, fingerprint is one of them. Facial recognition, I believe in a lot of countries, are including these countries, and are in Asia especially, are fully utilized this kind of technology. And voice recognition uh, technology, I, remember, I know everybody is using like phone, like a lot of uh, uh, like lights and music, and, you, and are using the voice recognition to operate those uh, tools and devices. This is a second technology uh, our company is offering to help. Uh, to provide a solution. And third is a KYC AML uh, compliance. Uh, we're compliance ready. We are going to cooperate with government, NGO, or non-government organization, private sectors, to provide uh, KYC or known your customer or an AML anti-money laundry. I believe a lot of uh, big corporations, um, financial especially, and governments, they, uh, every employees, they require to take the course uh, and test uh, after, after that in order to continue your employment. So this is another technology. And the next uh, slide, the next technology is uh, mobile blockchains. As, uh, as we already heard uh, the gentleman mentioned, uh, there are seven billion mobile phones right now currently in the whole world. So that meaning the co collaboration of the whole world. So we involve more and more people in the whole world to can enable them to fight for these uh, two agendas, the no poverty as well as the climate actions, right? Uh, the last one but least one is the smart uh, AI. So as everybody remember, not long ago, uh, the company, one of the companies uh, uh, invented the AlphaGo. It's a very artificial intelligent robot or machine compete with their chess uh, world champion. He beat them. So this is a kind of a technology, AI, artificial intelligence, we are going to use. All right? But not at the same level, but we're going to improve. So we mentioned about 7 billion phones in the whole world. So uh, I believe, including myself, we know a lot of people is using, uh, have a f cell phones in the US. A lot of people also understand there is a European and Asian, a lot of uh, uh, phones also. Let me ask a second question, just uh, for fun. How many of you know, how many mobile phones or mobile users in Africa? Just a quick question, another Jeopardy question. Anybody? The young gentleman? <laughs> Anybody? Just a guess. Yes. 35 million. Anybody else? Again, I cheated. I Googled the answer. Oh, no, 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 no. You're not. You cannot. Yes, the gentleman over there. 100 million is another answer. Who? 2 million. 200 million. All right. No more? All right. Let's find our answer. So. Now, now the answer. According to the statistics in October 2018, there are 444 million, 444 million mobile subscribers in Africa. Almost a half billion people. So nobody is getting close. 
So this is the environment. So mobile, we can, we can embrace the blockchain technology and AI technology to the mobile phone, make it mobile blockchain technology. That can transfer, transform each mobile users to an investor and a mobile activist. So that will competing Com, uh, combating the properties because of pro what's, why there's a property, the definition of property, the reason become property, there's three major reasons, because of lack of uh, education. People do not have good education. And second is uh, do not have uh, the opportunity to find a job or find a better job. And third, they don't have the lack of the opportunity to access to the financial system or financial funding. So meaning they don't have money. They don't have education. They don't have job. So by providing the phone, people can learn, people can invest, people can make the phone as a bank. As a gentleman mentioned, the uh, uh, Bitcoin, we don't talk about Bitcoin right now, but it's an opportunity to generate uh, money in the phone itself, can make the phone as a bank, can make the phone as a learning machine, a, a school, and also can make the phone as a voting machine to support the, the, the climate action, et cetera, right? So, so uh, YesCoin, uh, we provide uh, YesCoin Academy, so we can uh, be one of the, the mention, uh, one of the mentioned earlier, why people become poor, so education. So lack of education has become property. So we're providing the uh, YesCoin Academy, uh, there's some um, multiple channels of education, thousands of people on blockchain, the latest technology programs are in, 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 over there. So we're going to store more and more related, the latest and greatest technology, so that everybody, not only the US, but also in the world, even the poorest uh, country in the world, can learn, can educate it, can be educated, and can be financially ready. So uh, we have, uh, right now we have a, a very good uh, campaign or program fighting for the, for the uh, climate action. We call Go Green with a YesCoin campaign. So what do we do? So the members help promote awareness by submitting the photo of how they can contribute to the climate action. So the blockchain, you can, you can be very complicated in the high tech but we can translate it and make it very simple. Everybody can use normally. So what we did, what we did was uh, high school students in Nigeria, they go to shopping. Instead of using the nylon uh, uh, plastic bag, they're using a tote bag for the uh, grocery shopping. So because there is a recycled bag, people can use and use again and again and again. So this is one of the the good examples, the small examples to make things simple, but it's, uh, we are using AI and, and the blockchain technology in the background and to make it happen and to make everybody engage, involved in the whole world, no matter where you are, how good you are, how high of education you are. So uh, currently, uh, YesCoin, uh, we have users or have, we have investors, or we have uh, people who own our coins in more than 104 countries. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see in the map, uh, so the countries uh, will be, have a different color if uh, it's involved. Uh, I have a detailed number. So specifically, there are 150,000 YES token holders right now in the world, and 400 of, of, of them in 104 countries have been KYC verified and have established the digital identity which allow them to access financial, not only the financial service, but also the education system and job opportunities. So what's the KYC again? Knowing your customers and AML also. So to make it short, so I know a lot of people will have a lot of questions in terms of uh, 
uh, all the topics, uh, again, no one solution, no one person can solve the whole world, but we're working with all the organizations on the, on the podiums and also every try to involve everybody. We make the complicated things simple, make it happen. In the background, we provide the technology, AI and blockchain to support this and make it easier and make it more powerful, make it faster, make it more secure. All right, so I have the, the, multimedia, uh, the social media uh, address. If you're interested, feel free and look at it, and also including the email address, and feel free if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you very much. Now I cannot wait to introduce this amazing woman to both of us. She is the founder of the Global Empowerment Movement, GEM, an organization with United Nations Economic and Social Council status since 2018. Through this organization, she actively advocates and participates at the UN forums to address critical local and global issues for sustainable developments. She is a recipient of the present Lifetime Achievement Award presented by the 44th President of the United States, President Barack Obama, for excellency in service. She is Georgia State Global Goodwill Ambassador and United Nations representative, dedicated to empowerment services and advocacy to advance family and community development, and address public health issues, including gender equality, human trafficking, and improved eradication. She is the author of the Georgia Senator Resolution 381, an empowerment book called We Are the Blessing of Africa, Reshaping Our Greatness Together. She founded the Blessing of Africa Empowerment Foundation to focus on addressing issues in Africa. Her mission is to live to her name and to be a blessing to the leading people, especially women prone to subjugation, with special focus on the abused abandoned single mothers and their children, disadvantaged by poverty. Ladies and, gen ladies and gentlemen, now let's have Dr. Queen Blessing. Wow, thank you so much. I will, once again, I want to say thank you to every one of you um, for making it here. We are truly very grateful that you've honored our invitation. Um, a lot has been said, like I said earlier in my introductory um, comment, I am not a blockchain expert, but I am an advocate seeking for solutions to the sustainable goals agenda. So we are here to rub our minds together, but I just wanted to share briefly, just give you an overview of the main um, topic the substance of the reason actually why we are here. Um, we are all affected um, by the climate change and we see poverty all around us. So more than half um, of the extreme poverty of the extreme poor live in sub-Saharan Africa with an estimated 413 million people. The majority of the world's poorest exist in remote rural areas and often in countries with unstable governance. Lack of investment means minimal access to schools, healthcare, energy, and safe water. Localized issues such as social economic status, gender, ethnicity, and geography, and geography are determining factors on what resources these poor communities can readily assess from national and international funding agencies. There are many factors that causes um, sustainable, that causes and sustain poverty. Let me take that again. There are many factors that causes and sustain poverty. Natural causes can be earthquakes, just as we've been you know, saying all around us, Haiti in 2020, and severe droughts in Somalia in 2016. Although the natural disasters may be short term, the lasting effects are typically long term. 
the magnitude 7 earthquake in Haiti may have only lasted for a few minutes. But the devastating or the devastation of the country's economy is still felt after a decade. International humanitarian aids are essential during the initial devastating impact of a natural disaster. But one adverse consequences of long-term aids replacing real infrastructural investment in a vicious cycle of sustaining poverty instead of trying to solve poverty. World Bank missions, World Bank's mission statement carved in stone at their Washington headquarters is, our dream is a world free of poverty. And their Millennium Development Goals is to eradicate extreme poverty by 2030. This fight against poverty is further embedded with the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals, which are the blueprint to achieving a better and sustainable future for all. These goals address the global challenges that we all must face, including fight against poverty, inequality, climate change, environmental degradation, peace and justice. Poverty is driven by money, or more correctly stated, the lack of money. It is claimed that 82% of the global wealth is owned by just 1% of the people. Such wealth is centralized and strictly manipulated with distribution of wealth from the rich developed um, nations to the poor underdeveloped world, typically through unsustainable aids and, and loans that makes poorer indebted nations even more poorer and even more indebted. To break this vicious cycle, of manipulated poverty, a globalized, decentralized financial instrument is needed. And blockchain, as I've learned, and I keep learning, offers at its technological heart such a decentralized open system that balances the financial playing field for all, allowing poorer nations to more efficiently and cost effectively treat their own natural resources using a universal digital coin or digital token that was no single controlling that has no single controlling I will take that again that doesn't make any sense does it okay to break this vicious cycle of manipulated poverty a global decentralized financial instrument is needed and blockchain offered a statement technological half, such as decentralized open system that balances the financial playing field for all, allowing poorer nations to more efficiently and cost effectively treat their own natural resources using a universal digital token that has no single controlling and manipulating master. The easier access to money without borders will have a trickle-down beneficial effect to redistribute wealth to the poor. Of course, simply giving out money without planning will be prone to waste and corruption. So the natural network supervision of digital currencies by a global audit means records of trade transactions um, publicly scrutinized and approved. It is estimated that corruption reduces a nation's gross domestic product by 4%. A less corruptible system invariably leads to a higher productivity and greater reduction in poverty. Although the vast majority of scientists agree that human activities are contributing factors to global warming, there are opponents that challenge such assessments. And even a few denies, deniers can provide end up adapting ammunition to political um, and commercial parties that have vested interest to model the truth for their own electoral campaigns and motivated profits. Like predicting the weather, the science behind analyzing the vast quantities of data is complex. Creating enough uncertainties to allow for this 
spread of misinformation and conflicting arguments. A 2013 assessment of over 20,000 published scientific papers since 1990 indicates that 97% concludes that global warming is caused by humans. Despite this overwhelming consensus, I will skip a line. Opponents of climate change usually cite the fact that our planet has naturally enduring periodic cycles of ice, ages, and global warming before men even learn how to use fire, or even that high level of atmospheric carbon dioxide is good for trees. Scientists may find such argument as oversimplification and distortion of facts, but for the majority of average non-technical people, these simplistic statements are easy to digest and in many cases place sufficient doubts on their minds to take the reality of climate change seriously. As Mike Twain famously quoted, there are lies, damned lies, that damned lies and then there are statistics. Although this quote may be considered humorous, the consequence of having statistical data is analyzed and, has, um, and how many full conclusions can be drawn from them are very serious matters. In the case of climate change studies, the impact of making the wrong decisions may well determine the future survival of humanity. The amount of data collected on climate change studies are vast, and the modeling used and the modeling used to interpret the data are highly complex. To date, most climate scientists tend to work on their own research in academic, in academic isolation or small collaborative group, develop their own algorithms to manipulate their collected data and draw their own conclusions which even for unsupposedly unbiased scientists, there are invariably personal biasing that goes into their research findings, and most importantly, in how they propose solution. Blockchain is specifically a digital ledger that correlates, manipulates, and stores vast amount of continuous incoming data. Hence, it is ideally suited as a potential global depository for all climate research data. Artificial intelligence, by its very nature, is a self-learning automated system that advances its knowledge, knowledge base with each subsequent interactions, iterations, and therefore is also ideally suited as an unbiased analyzer of climate data that can refine accurate climate change predictions and provide real practical solutions. Google spent $500 million in 2014 to purchase artificial intelligence AL development company DeepMind, which is used, um, used mainly for playing games. One of um, its AI software programs Alpha Zero was able to self-learn how to play chess in less than four hours to beat all other humans and computer programs. Games are fun, but not life-saving. Imagine what a similar investment in a serious artificial intelligence climate change system with blockchain data management could solve for humanity to come. Um, I just read to you something that we prepared based on the topic of our conversation. But many of us do not, still cannot understand how all of this blockchain and artificial intelligence can help to combat poverty and climate change. So it's a continuous effort of learning. I will still apply myself to learning more. Um, what this is actually simply saying is the effectiveness of um, having blockchain at the background to solve the, solution, um, the problems that we have. So I will leave, the, um, I will leave this to the next person to, to tackle and let's hear how they are using blockchain um, and artificial intelligence. 
Once again, thank you for listening and thank you for being here. Thank you, Dr. Yin, bless, uh, Dr. Queen Blessing. Now, next one. Yeah, I want to introduce Dr. Yin. <laughs> okay. Now, I'm, I'm very glad to introduce this patented inventor, award-winning author. Leon has been actively involved in the technology space for several decades and has many published scientific articles, including perfect cytography, series of unbreakable cycription algorithms. He has developed a concept of embedding moral command codes into AI blockchain algorithms that will safeguard human creators from their own AI creations. Let's welcome Dr. Liang Ying. Firstly, I obviously want to thank uh, the permanent mission of Gambia for hosting this uh, extremely important uh, event, and obviously for our most beautiful and talented uh, Queen Blessing, uh, incredible woman, uh, to give us this opportunity to share uh, our platform. Queen Blessing actually told me on day one when I approached her to put this great event on, that when you put this on, you better have solutions because Gambia wants solution. You want solution. You don't want talk, talk, talk. You want walk, 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 okay? And the United Nation itself, as you can see from the face up there, the General Secretary, he made an announcement uh, recently that the UN itself, the largest intergovernmental organization in the world, must embrace blockchain. In fact, his organization has taken the step forward uh, his children fund, which accepts six billion dollars, has now officially and legally accept Bitcoin and Ethereum within its donation. Do you know just how big a landmark that is? It is huge. Obviously, we want on this stage, I am joined by not just talkers, but walkers like GUC here. They already have digital currency. So obviously, we want to use that money for good causes. Otherwise, we won't be upon this stage. So yes, we want to do the action that you, the General Secretary, has said that must be part of this organization, digital currency. Okay? Of course, there's a lot more to blockchain than digital currency, as Nicholas pointed out. And as I will obviously uh, go into a bit more detail. So how are we going to do the walking instead of the talking? All right, I'm talking a lot up here, but what am I walking? Well, I'm walking with my global organization, uh, our collective, which I'm totally blessed to have absolutely amazing people. Obviously, Queen Blessing is one of the most talented. Uh, she didn't get her award from the President Barack Obama for just doing nothing. She's an absolute angel. She's empowering women around the world, obviously predominantly in Africa. She's promoting through her movies, through her book, and she's raising four beautiful children and a mother on her own. Damn, I can't even look after myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She deserves that applause, not me. And other walkers, I mean, there's a gentleman over there, Vincent, movie star, superstar, concert pianist, but he set his life apart with the riches and went out to field. He took a bullet literally to his head in Sudan, protecting children. Okay, if it wasn't for Kevlar helmet, he won't be sitting there now. We'll be posting eulogies about him in his grave. Okay, these are the type of walkers that we have in our organization. All right, not talkers. We have walkers that are willing to take bullets for people that they're trying to save. Now, I'm a coward. I'm not willing to go out there, even with Kevlar helmet or vest, to save anyone. But I will do my best to promote their mission and put the necessary campaign. So on this stage, you see, we represent the United Nations. We have Africa, we have European, and we have Asians. Okay, so we represent the world. And it's the only the world that's going to save the world, not individually. That's why our organization is called our collective. And as you see, Queen Blessing with Global Empowerment Mu Movement and Museum Future Foundation are two NGOs 
our members, our collective. We Can Save Children will be an NGO soon, okay? So he's, he's, he's literally spilt blood and sweat and taken bullets to, to basically go out there and save millions of children in Africa. So he is doing his walking, not his talking. And we hopefully can generate donation with digital currency through people like GUC, Yascoin, to support campaign like Queen Blessing, empowering women in Africa, like Vincent Lin, saving children in Africa. Okay? So, obviously, our collective, through our global organization, we are affiliated to United Nations, which is leading the way. So, thank you to all the UN members here that's helping us lead the way. So, through our technology partner, obviously, I'm sharing this great platform with GUC, and you heard from Yascoin as well. We want to implement, so we want to stop talking. We want to start walking. We want these digital currency here donated to great causes, like We Can Save Children and Global Empowerment Movement. These are the people that are taking their action and turning them into taking the talking and taking it into walking, okay? So we must support the campaign, whether it's hard currency or digital currency, and the world is moving to a digital currency. So embrace it. The United Nations asks you to embrace it. So embrace it. So now there's a lot of fancy words. People saying AI and blockchain this, as Nicholas pointed out. I mean, I'm a physicist. I'm not touting it. I have a PhD in nuclear physics. So I'm very technology and dare I say smart, okay? I've been to a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, event that talk about blockchain AI, but like Nicholas said, most of them, to be honest with you, they just talk. They don't know what they're talking about, okay? So let me make it clear. AI and blockchain are not the same thing, okay? Blockchain is, is a relatively new invention, only just a decade uh, old. AI has been around for 50 years. You probably watch movies on it, Terminator, etc. Yeah, that is AI, and that is real. Okay? Few talk about it, but there is a danger of AI. If you do not program AI correctly, AI can be very, very dangerous. Russia reportedly has an automated weaponized system called Dead Hand that controls its nuclear weapon. Okay? There are drones that are flying over conflict areas that are automated. So the world is approaching what you're seeing in the movies, Terminator, okay? And like in movie, Terminator, the AI, if not programmed correctly, could turn on its creator, which is us. So our collective organization, like I said, we do great deeds, but we do great deeds because we base our principles on core commandments, on core vision that controls us to do goodness. Okay? We are human. We're not born to do goodness. We're not born to do evil either. We're born innocent. When we grow up, we turn to our, our culture, through our interaction, through the peers, through our teachers, through our parents. That is what turns us either into good people or evil people. Okay? So through our organization, we have our own commandment. Now, we developed this commandment so that it is programmable it can be coded into command code. I call it AI moral code. Those command code can be programmed not just into the software, but embedded into firmware to protect the AI, to make, the way I describe it, is to put humanity into AI, okay? Humanity into AI. So, Blockchain. Well, Monke is a UN guy over there. He gave me one great line. I'm going to steal your phone. So Andrew said to you, there are 44, 444 million phones in Africa. Through our organization, we want to aim so that there's a billion phone users in Africa. The reason why I mentioned this is the great line by Monke. How do we combat poverty? We want to have the poor turn every single poor in this world into its own private investor. 
That's an absolutely beautiful line that Moncur gave me, okay? That is how we will liberate the poor. We will reduce the poverty. We will turn every single person that whether they have $1.25, whether they have whatever it is, $4,000, whatever they have, they control it themselves, okay? They are their own investor. They are their own controller, no matter how poor they are, okay? Therefore, we don't want to just talk about it. We want to put it into action, okay? So that is a great line, okay? Turn every poor into his own private investor. That is ultimately one way of reducing and eliminating poverty. The other way of reducing poverty, as mentioned by Queen, is reduce corruption. If we overnight can eliminate corruption, we will put 4% of the gross domestic product of a nation back into the nation's economy and wealth, okay? And that is what blockchain can do. As Andrew mentioned, the security aspects of it, you take the control from the human. We are all corruptible. I preach goodness, but I know I'm a man. I am corruptible. Okay, I have the, all the sins of this world upon me. Okay, so take that sin away from me and give it to the blockchain that will take away the corruption of mankind and eliminate that 4%. With that 4%, do you know how many? We can buy half a billion phone and give it to the poor and say, here's your $1.25. Put it into this phone that we're giving you from the 4% that we're saving you. Okay. This is your own money. You are your own investor. Take control of your own destiny, okay? You are no longer poor. You can control your own money, okay? So that is our goal. That is what we want to do. That's what we want to put action into our talk. So obviously, I'm not going to rehash the, the fraud corruption part of it, which Yascoin and GUC are embedded in their technology. Okay, it is, it is a, a vital component of security that people, when they use their financial, their 125, they know it is there, it's secure, and they can use it for quick, fast transactions. Now, that's blockchain. So, where's the AI come into it? The big, if you go to any expert now, it's all about AI blockchain. Okay, AI is simple, it's a machine that thinks for itself, it can be dangerous unless you program it correctly. With our moral code that we developed through our collective, we will program it cor correctly, okay? But AI uses vast amount of data to process, okay? Vast, trillions, trillions uh, of bits of information that it needs to process to get the right information, analyze it. So blockchain, as Nicholas said, is a chain of block. So that is why AI and blockchain is a perfect marriage. AI is the next thinking machine, but it needs lots of data for it to process and come up with the right solution. Blockchain is that data management system that gets together, and that's why people are now these days talking about AI and blockchain. But the two are not the same, but they will going forward, okay? So with the, 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 the panel experts of doers, not just talkers, but doers, that is the next stage of the evolution, is integrate artificial intelligence and blockchain. Now, along with giving a billion in Africa their own cell phone, so their, their own investor, we are going to turn every single app user with the cell phone, the billions around the world, to be part of the climate change activists. Okay? So as Queen pointed out, even though 97% believes it, the 3%, there's a lot of ambiguity in the data. The data is locked up in the hierarchy of academia where I'm from. The common people, I'm afraid, are not part of that argument. And because they're not part of that argument, they don't believe in it, okay? Seriously, they don't believe in it. A lot of people still come to me. Dr. Ying, you're nuclear physicist. Is there really global warming? Is there, I mean, I, I see it out there. It's like freezing out there. How can there be global warming? I'm freezing my butts off. There can't be global warming. Okay, therefore, along with the app that we'll create to manage your wealth, we're going to create the same app that will have its own artificial intent. So you can enter your own data. So 
all 7 billion people on this planet one day will have their own phone to control their own uh, financial thing. They will also be their own climate change activist. They will enter their own localized climate data, what the temperature like, what the sea level like, what, what the humidity like, everything. All that will go to a single AI machine that whether the United Nations, it will not belong to any one nation. It will be independent. It will be accessible to the whole world. Okay, so you take the, uh, the biasing out of it. So we want to turn every single human being on this world to combat poverty and to combat climate change. Okay, so with your help, and with these experts that are doing things now, they're doing things, they're not just talking about it. We will follow what the UN Secretary General said. We will combat poverty by embracing blockchain. But we are going to go to the next step, to the next evolution. We're going to take the artificial intelligence and also combat climate change. Yes, that's only two solutions of the 17 that the UN, but like you said to you, you know, we all got to take baby step. As the saying goes, the impossible we can do. Miracles will just take a little bit longer. And I thank you all for listening to us and giving this opportunity of how we can work together to eliminate poverty and climate change and how we can basically do the mandate that the ambassador Gambia has set for us and Queen has set for us from the day I told to her. Dr. Ying, bring me solution. Less talking, more walking. Thank you very much. Thank you, our physicist. Let's welcome Yu Xiangming. He's not only the president from the Wall Street News Agency, but also a real leader. Yu Xiangming, please. Dear Ambassador Lang Yabu, His Excellency, Dear Queen Blessing Yitua, Yi Her Excellency, dear GUC leaders and members, dear ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Today, I'm very pleased to take this golden opportunity to make a speech here about blockchain technology uh, and news media. Thanks a lot to Ambassador Lang Yabo, His Excellency, to Queen Blessing Itzwa, Her Excellency, to GUC leaders and members, to all ladies and gentlemen here attending this conference in this meeting room. Thank you very much. Now, please let me introduce a little bit about our Wall Street News Agency and how it's connected to the new technology blockchain. Wall Street News Agency, uh, it created by me and my name is Yu Xiangming, and many of you already know me, because I'm famous of this book, right? And many. And uh, we set up this uh, uh, news medium, Wall Street News Agency, in September 2019, which is developed from Wall Street Times reset in 2018 and originally founded in 2013 with headquarter office in Wall Street at 14 Wall Street, 20th floor. And we have a branch office called Chinatown Station in Chinatown at 52 East Broadway, the fifth floor. Uh, Wall Street News Agency actually is a Chinese news media, plus future electronic trading platform with advanced technology blockchain. We have been publishing newspapers both electronically and in paper, both in Chinese and English languages. Next, please let me talk about the relationship between Wall Street News Agency and the new technology, blockchain technology. Why do we have such a soft spot for the blockchain? Throughout the history of the media, we can see the media 
has been holding four periods of transformation and development. The first one is the classical media era, many telegraph, telephone, and correspondence. And in our Chinese, we even have uh, a chicken, a chicken hair to send messages. We call it Ji Mao Xin. The second space period of era of traditional medium, we exchange ideas through television, newspaper, magazine, and books. The third period of self media era, since the media era, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, especially with Chinese Weibo and WeChat movements have become one of the most important sources of information. Movements have become a way of life in WeChat for the Chinese people, but we also have WhatsApp. We can send our ideas through Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, but for the Chinese people, especially the Chinese community and 1.4 billion Chinese, they like WeChat. We spread our understanding of life through the new lifestyle attitude. With the popularization of big data, the internet-based self-media has ushered in an intelligent upgrade. This is a way of spreading your reading habits based on big data, but we quickly find out that in the reading world, people are easily caught in the vortex formed by the differences between subjective preferences and opinions. Unity, the way the world is presented, is frag fragmented. The fourth area is the arrival of the blockchain media era. In this system, people can emulate uh, fork news, get content insensitively and level realization, and make money by writing articles and reading articles. Everyone is creating. Blockchain media is not only reporting, but also distributing, decentralizing, contracting. It can issue tokens, new distri distributed media, we call it distri distributed media. Traditional Chinese, uh, Yin Yang, Syria, and Western, bilaterally have many common points based on the blockchain technology and application. The media is managed by the blockchain methods. This is a brand new media ecology. Wall Street News Agency is catching up with these four, the four technology changes of humanity. Blockchain technology, access to the use of the media. The major market of Wall Street News Agency is positioned in Chinese news media, online electronically trading, trading platform. We currently have a very strong team. We created three major information published platforms. One, electronic network newspaper. Two, paper medium newspaper, books and magazines. The third, which had public information. In line with today's summit, as stated by Dr. Queen Blessing Iswa in the opening context overview, the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres says in a statement provided to Forbes that the United, that the in United Nations, the intergovernmental giant needs to embrace blockchain. 
This article was published in our Wall Street News Agency newspapers, both in English and in Chinese, dated January 20th, 2020, January 10th, 2020. Uh, now we have decided to recommend blockchain technology to every field, especially to the United Nations 17 sustainable development projects. Let's work it out together under your efforts. What's the new agency? We are applying the new technology blockchain to our own system to create a brand new news media. Let's work it out together under your support. Thank you. Thank you very much for your listening and uh, thank you very much for your support. Thank you. Thank you, Yushami, again. Now let's invite Speaks Darin from Sable Ascent Corn Corp. Imagine. Imagine a world where commerce is transparent, decentralized, and immutable. This is my vision for the world. Transparent, decentralized, and immutable. I love the theme of this summit. Blockchain technology and artificial intelligence, combating poverty and climate change. Before I get into that, I want to thank everybody. Dr. Queen Blessings, all the great speakers, everybody for having us here. I'm empowered to be here. The entire organization committee, I'm elated for the future of blockchain technology. My favorite quote actually is by Jim Rohn. And his quote is, find a way to serve the many, for service to many leads to greatness. I'm in pursuit of greatness too. But my pursuit is based on a few things. To put the black people in the world across this planet on one accord, on an each one teach one strategy, to understanding the future of blockchain technology and how it's gonna impact and eliminate poverty. That's my mission. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends and foes, leaders and followers, we have a serious problem. Yes, we do have three billion people in poverty around the world, making less than $1.90 per day. Well, we're here now, right? So what are we going to do about it? We're talking about solutions and the problems in the 21st century. We're looking at our communities around the world, our countries, and our companies. The highest level of poverty is in countries that need to implement and execute initiatives in blockchain technology today. I'm talking about systems. I'm talking about sectors. We're talking about data storage, voting, infrastructure, education, cloud storage, healthcare, supply chain management, energy, and of course, banking. By, by creating applications, guys, blockchain technology in private for governments and public for everybody is a way to assist in executing and integrating our impoverished people into the system. We need to start not just training, but educating and re-educating those that already have education. All we need is internet access. As long as we have the infrastructure for internet access, we can educate, train, and re-educate those that are already educated on this technology. Through workshops, summits, forums, private, public, schools, churches, on how this technology works. In languages like Python, Flutter, C++, Solidity, these are languages in blockchain technology. In less than four months, a person can earn upwards of thirty to $60,000 USD, not $1.90 per day, creating a new tax base through education. This is a 10-year 
new growth rate in software development worldwide. Sable Ascent has programmers in four countries, all black countries. As me as a builder of blockchain technology and a digital currency focused on the empowerment and the eradication of poverty in black countries and cities around this planet, it's our job and I'm humbly here to serve to help and assist Queen Blessing and the rest of the panel in eliminating poverty using blockchain technology. Thank you. Thank you. Next, next in white, <clears throat> Hadrak Merrick from Wall Street News Agency. Thank you very much. Okay. Dear Ambassador, His Excellency Lang Yao, dear Queen Blessing Itua, dear GUC leaders and members, dear ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, good afternoon. I'm very happy and I'm very pleased that I'm here and I can join this important event. Brokers are the natural result of the development of traditional financial industry. The evolution of the field of digital asset follows the same rule as emerging financial market in 2020. Traditional financial brokers have started to enter the field of digital assets trading while emerging fintech enterprises have joined to game two. Fidelity Investments, the world's largest asset management enterprise, will launch Bitcoin trading services to institutional clients. The service was jointly developed by Fidelity and securities brokerage enterprise E-Trade Robinhood. E-Trade is a well-known internet broker in the United States with more than 5 million clients. TDA Ameritrade, the second largest internet broker in the United States, also provides Bitcoin futures trading service for professional institutions or clients. Traditional financial trading is consisting of opening an account, making transactions, registering, settling, and so on. Under the context of traditional financial industry, which exists with a relatively well-established structure, designated services are often provided for each part of the trading. However, in the field of digital assets, services are provided by the same organizations for each part of the trading when compared to the traditional financial industry, namely exchanges which have relatively large drawbacks. At the early stage of the field of digital assets, Simple industrial structures help drive the rapid development of the field because of small trading volume and less professional demand for various services. However, tens of thousands of exchanges have been established throughout the world and such phenomena inevitably engenders fierce competition. The increasing number of clients and demand have resulted in higher requirements on services, and exchanges in turn have to add more investment and liquidity to develop and enhance their overall system performance and operational capabilities. Exchanges need to upgrade each link of their services to step up their game, but the concentration and irrational allocation of resources and liquidity could hinder the development of the industry. The total value of digital assets throughout the world has reached about the 300 billion US dollars after 10 years of development. If each link of trading were concentrated across exchanges, in the case that one of the trading links broke, it would impede the functionality of all other links and to overall stability of the industry, causing great risks. Ergo brokers are called for in such situations, when the scale of digital assets has reached a certain volume to mitigate the risk in the industry and optimize the allocation of resources. Apart from that, digital assets trading essentially belongs to the financial industry. However, engaging in financial industry could cause a certain level of difficulty to common users, and therefore brokers are needed to serve and guide users. 
Besides, using professional brokerage services provided by brokers helps to reduce the threshold of common users and in turn attract new flow to join the industry fest. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Now let's invite Mr. Adam Wang from GUC. Let's welcome. Uh, 到我这儿就变汉语了啊 那正如这次联合国主题大会，啊，这次会议的主题是我们用区块链的技术去消灭贫穷，去改善贫富差距。那我想，这正好是GUC俱乐部当时成立的初衷，也是为什么我们在2020年携手世界人民委员会共同推出
know, the uh, 17 SDGs, you know, have to be completed by 2030. But now with the blockchain, you know, I think that can help with the number one, there's no properties, uh, number 13, you know, for like climate change. So this is a, such a really uh, a educational uh, panelist. And, you know, lesson over the or, you know, I have to tell you, you know, I just, this is just to reflect my memory, you know, for the, uh, last year when uh, President Xi Jinping, you know, saying, talking about the uh, black chance, and he mentioned about uh, we have to emphasize like uh, the integrations and application of the blockchain uh, technology, because which plays a very important role in the new uh, technological uh, innovations and industrial you know, transformation. So, you know, I totally agree. Uh, we have many talking and talking, but I hear, I guess we are looking for the action and we're looking for the solution. And especially for the, uh, the Andrew Chai's, you're talking about uh, this is the kind of black chance can be the cooperation, okay, with the NGOs, the governments, you know, all the private sectors. So I guess that each one of us is sitting here, we definitely can benefit for that. But what are we going to do? What kind of action are we going to do? So I think I'm really expecting, you know, I'm really happy to come and learning and to hear what I say. But I guess next time we need to see the actions. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, I was, we didn't, uh, we didn't quite, we didn't start early. So we are we're 20 minutes into the time. So I apologize for that. And so because of that, we have to reshuffle stuff and, uh, you know, we are running late. They will shut us down soon. We ought to vacate this place by one and it's, it's just a few minutes past one. So I just want to I'll use this opportunity to really appreciate our special guest um, from all the way from New York City. We have the council woman president, um, Mildred um, Crump, and um, Cleopatra Toka, assembly woman. We really appreciate your sacrifices and your coming. And uh, we actually had you in the program as well, but time is not going to let us, but we just want to appreciate you for, for coming. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I also cannot um, look at the audience and not, I'm surprised. I'm so sorry, Queen Mother. Queen Mother is my mother. I, had, I didn't send you any invitation, so I'm sorry. I know you understand. <laughs> I have been running up and down. But I'm glad you are here. Thank you so much. You're not a sit down for Queen Mother. I'm Queen Mother Dr. Blakely. I'm the community mayor of Harlem and the ambassador of goodwill to Africa. And I've been in this home for 50 years as a humanitarian. I am very proud of you, Princess Blessings, of talking about the poverty and looking at the SDGs. Women will be gathering in March in Harlem from all over the world at the Apollo Theater. So with you coming in with blockchain and coming up with a solution and a plan of action for us, we appreciate you. And blessings upon all of us in this spirit and the energy of blessings which God has granted her, the energy to come to us for sustainable and development goals for 2030. We bless you and also our ambassador from the Gambia. Blessings to all of you, blessings. That's our queen mother for you. That's our queen mother for you, thank you so much. Um, I pray that they will not shut off on us. Um, the, our special guest now, do you have, want to say a word or two? Mildred? Councilwoman, President from Newark. Good afternoon, Mr. Am I on? Am I Press. On? Yeah, it's oh. on now. I'm live. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Mildred Crump, and I have the honor and privilege of uh, being a public servant in the great city of Newark. Uh, New Jersey, the largest city in the state of New Jersey. Um, I am absolutely uh, delighted to be in your midst today as you hold this 
conference on a very important subject um, in uh, po at poverty um, is international, uh, but it is particularly uh, acute in communities of color. And so as each one of you has expressed uh, some solutions, uh, that's the reason I'm happy uh, to be in your, uh, in your uh, audience. Uh, I want to thank Queen Blessing, uh, one of the most phenomenal women that I know. So somebody should clap, clap yeah. on that one. <laughs> uh, among the other incredible women who are also uh, in this space for inviting me uh, to be a part of this um, uh, great subject. I took notes. Uh, I felt as though I was in school. And uh, Mr. Yan, you, uh, men, you know that uh, I am uh, a note. Some of you know who I am, uh, know that I take notes. So I will take uh, your wisdom back to Newark. And uh, certainly it would be, I hope, not an imposition, uh, but to the leadership if you would certainly consider at some point in time uh, maybe scaling down uh, what you do, do here at the United States and if we could have a similar seminar in the great city of Newark, we'd be honored uh, to host you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, We're going to you up on yes. that, by the way. Yes. <laughs> right. Yes. You're on. I'm in Hoboken. So the assembly woman, please. Hold on. Yeah. The assembly woman, um, Cleopatra. Queen. Uh, I'm indeed, uh, it's indeed an honor for me to be here to accept the invitation from Queen Blessings to come to hear and gain knowledge of everything that we're trying to do here. And I'm going to take all this information back to the State House because I'm uh, represent the state of New Jersey, Assemblywoman. Uh, Tucker, uh, and I represent the 28th district, which happens to be in Essex County and a part of Newark because I am a resident of Newark, New Jersey. So we when, live next door. <laughs> yeah, we live next door to each other. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an uh, honor to have the opportunity to come and learn. It's a learning process, mm -hmm. and I like to also invite you at some times to come to the State House as well as to the City of Newark. Come to Trenton to our State House and share your information with all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I don't mean to rush us, but I want us to be professional. You know, we want to do the right thing as well. So I we have opportunity to have. Uh, um, Chris from Nigeria, the way from Nigeria, who has, who's fighting poverty in nationwide and across Africa countries. If you can please give us a minute of your word and what you are doing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for this um, opportunity. Um, I came all the way from Nigeria for this um, because um, in Africa we know poverty is not um, is real. You know, we've heard a lot of motivational speakers who say poverty is a mindset, but in Africa it's real. So it's very important for us to see ways to also partner to fight this because one of the deficiency we have in Africa is first the education of how um, common Africans can invest and protect their future. And for me, I see um, digital economy as one of the ways to combating it because it only do not give fish to them, it also teach them how to fish. So for us, like when Blessing have said, we want to see things practically working beyond just talking. We want to see implementation of what we have said today so that um, the African community can be liberated from the poverty which have long encapsulated them. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you all so much for, for coming. Um, in summary, we are all here for the same reason. We really want to see a change, and we are leading the change. That's why you are here. That's why you have uh, taken our time from your busy schedules to be here, and we really appreciate that. Together, we can solve the issues that affect us all. But take no mistake, make no mistake though, 
because it's much in so many communities, doesn't mean it does not affect you. Whatever affects another community, black or white, Asian or Hispanic, affects us all. So we are the solutions. We are the blessings of our own world, and we are the solutions to, our, to the issues that we face. We can eradicate poverty. We can solve the issue of climate change, but it begins with each and every one of us. We are stronger together. We are the blessings of our own world. Thank you all for coming. Pictures? Okay. Um, for those of you who, were, who had received the information earlier for a follow-up um, luncheon, we will still have it at 1.30. We'll talk after this. If you had that invitation, please, let's talk about it after. Thank you all. Oh,谢谢,谢谢,谢谢,谢谢,谢谢,谢谢,谢谢,谢谢,谢谢,谢谢,谢谢,谢谢,谢谢,谢谢,谢谢,谢谢,谢谢,谢谢,谢谢,